Okay, good evening and welcome. I'm Mark Pinto with you from Phoenixville Public Library. And I hope you folks are ready to become math whizzes tonight because uh, our guest, Michael McTiernan, is ready to make you one as we learn <laughs> all about Vedic math from our guest, Michael. Michael, why don't you give, uh, tell folks a little bit about yourself before you get started, and then you can feel free to take it away. Uh, <laughs> the last thing in the world I am is a mathematician. I have a degree in history many, many years ago. I saw this used in 1987 out in California when I was working for Sun Microsystems. We were out in the big conference room and we're trying to figure out what price we needed to be at to win this great big government bid. And every time somebody would lower the price, Benod Kosla would give you the new gross margin into two decimal places mentally faster than you could use a calculator. And I turned to the vice president, I said, what the hell is this? He goes, He's, the kid swallowed the calculator. At the time he was 28 years old. Now I think he owns half of California. But um, so that was my exposure to it. And I never could figure out how to learn it until a year ago, an Indian friend of mine said, what I was describing was Vedic mathematics. And he got me a bunch of books and I read them and put them together. And so this is what this is. Um, so why don't we just jump into it and see where it takes us. And uh, folks, yeah, feel free if uh, you have a question during the presentation to put it into the chat box. Uh, at the end, we'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourself. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mike. Take it away. All right. As you can, as you can read there, 800 years old from India. 31 sutras, which is an Indian word for procedure, um, and it's mental math. No brains are needed whatsoever. If you can do multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, you can do Vedic mathematics. It, it does, it, it works by increasing your skill of remembering. Just as a, a note, you must know the base you are in. This is a unit, that's tens and that's a hundreds. Vedic math usually, not always, but usually goes left to right. The opposite of what we learned was going right to left. Um, the agenda is this. We're going to go over addition, subtraction, multiplication, square root, squaring, cubing, division. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to show how you check your answers on big problems. You may want to use a calculator to verify some answers. Um, the symbols we use would be the number sign, obviously, then square and cube or carry. Drop equals drop, no addition. This is why you might want to take this up when we're done here. Um, if you're if you're going to go for a job interview, or if you're younger and you're going to go into the university for an interview, you're competing against 15 to 20 other guys that are very similar to you. So at the last of the interview, the interviewee, everything is fluff before these two questions. We'll ask you two questions. Um, is there anything is there any is there anything you want to tell me about is there anything i should know about you and what you want to say is yes i can do multiplication of two three or four digit numbers in my head faster than you can use a calculator you can do it on a calculator and you'll be able to do that at the end of this talk uh, and there's a subtle difference here i don't teach vedic mathematics i show it to you and you don't learn it, you teach yourself. Same as basketball. Somebody shows you how to do a jump shot and says, all right, all you got to do is practice. The more you practice, the better you're going to be. It's mental. And as I said, when you devote yourself to practice often, you'll teach yourself to be good at basketball and Vedic mathematics. All right, this is, you got to, you got to kind of know these are 31 sutras or different procedures. You got to know that just remember and know enough to know the procedure you're in. Sometimes when you're asked to multiply, you divide instead. In less than two or three seconds, can you do the following? 
the square root of 87 or any two-digit number, the cube root of this large number. Subtract 324 from 537. Multiply 36 or any two-digit number by 11. Divide this large number by 9. Square 54 or any number in the 50s. Square 111,111. By the end of the talk, you'll be able to do it in two or three seconds. There's, there's at least three magic numbers in Vedic mathematics. Five, nine, nine is very special, and 11, and maybe three. Whenever they come up, it's a different procedure than normal. All right, the first thing, do we think alike? I could ask for volunteers to give me a number, but that, that will take too much time. Let me ask you to trust me that these numbers right here, I just picked randomly. That's all they are. So do we think alike? Person number one would have given me this. Person number two, person number three. Of this number, you, you rearrange the digits to make the largest number and then the smallest number and you subtract the smallest from the largest. That's your answer. Same with this number, that's your answer. Same with this number, that's your answer. So you can see there, with three distinct different numbers, they all come out the same. So we do think alike to some degree. In some cases, in addition, Vedic math allows you to predict the answer before you know the numeric question, as the next slide will get into. The only rule is no duplicates in any of your three-digit numbers. The first thing you do is you're going to you're going to pick a, a number in sequence. So if uh, if somebody would or um, or Mark, you want to give me a number? <laughs> you want a three-digit number? Yeah, in sequence. In anyway, sequence, okay. One, two, three, three, okay. four, five. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. All right, there it is. And now I'm going to give you a, um, all right, that's the, that's the first number. Um, and now before we do the other one, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer to the, after we get all these digits, and it's going to be five numbers that we're going to add. The answer will be uh, 2234. I'm sorry, 2232. Can't add. All right. Um, Mark, can you now give me three, a number with three digits, random, any numbers you want? 819. All right. Now I'm going to give you my number, which is one eight zero now you give me another number four seven uh four seven six four seven six mm -hmm. uh, my number is five two three so if you add those numbers up the answer will be 2232 which was picked a long time ago how that is done, it's called the complement of nines. So the first sequence in sequence that Mark picked was two, three, four. All you do to get the answer is subtract two from four down here, and that's your first digit, and two, three, two is the remaining digits. And what numbers you put here are irrelevant. Mark's next number was 819. My number was 180, which is uh, eight from nine is one, one from nine is eight, nine from nine is zero. Mark's second number was four, seven, six. And my, my number was uh, four from nine is five, seven from nine is two, six from nine is three. So if you add those, all those digits up, this is your answer right here. You can predict that without, before you even know the numbers to be added. I mean, the guys who thought this stuff up <laughs> Had to be uh, tremendous, right? All right, let me uh, get out of annotating. All 
All right, simple addition. Here it is right here. Whoop. <laughs> Let me go back and get that off the screen. Just go to your annotate and uh, clear. Sometimes I'm dangerous. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> All right, simple addition. Can any of us add this up mentally just by looking at it? How you do it is you add 300 and 400 is 700 and 200 is 900 and 600 is 1500 1530 1670 is 1600 and 60 is 1660 and 90 is 1700 and 50 1758 1767 1781 and 1 1772 so instead of like we normally would do it in Western math, adding this up, carry and do this and add this up and carry that, you just add the big digits first, then the, then the second, the tens, and then the units, and you get the answer. All, all done mentally. When you add a series of numbers, I, as a confession, I think I mentioned, but just to be sure, I've been doing this about a year. And I don't know everything. And this is correct, but I'm not sure how it gets the answer. I'll explain in a minute. You want to add a series of numbers. This series, you add the smallest and the largest number, 4973. Then you divide, you multiply by 5, then divide by 2. So 4973 is 122. Multiplied by 5 is 610. Divide by 2. 305 is your answer. But if I now here's what I don't get yet, and I just don't know the answer. If I change this to this three to a nine, there would be a different answer, but it doesn't come out the same. Why I don't know, but what you but what you see here does work. I'm not sure that wasn't confusing. Maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, if you add consecutive numbers, 20, 23 to twenty nine have seven digits. You add the first and the last number, 23 and 29, 52 times 7, because that's how many digits you have, equals 364 divided by 2, 182 is your answer. So you could do this mentally, obviously. And this with 11, 26 to 36 has 11 digits. The same thing, 62 times 11, 682 divided by 2, 341 is your answer. Now, subtraction, if you're going to subtract 74,826 from 100,000, your answer is 25,174. How you do that is very, very easy. You take all from 9, the last from 10. So 7 from 9 is 2. 4 from 9 is 5. 8 from 9 is 1. 2 from 9 is 7. 6 from 10 is 4. This is, you just have to know the, the procedure you're in. It works for anything like when you have a hundred, a, uh, a six digit or, or a million even um, with the zeros. When you have this kind of a problem, you ignore the trailing zeros. So, and as, <laughs> pardon me. The number of zeros must equal the lesser number. So we have we have uh, three zeros as in, so we add one zero to 49. And one from 7,000. So zero 49 from 7,000 is 6,951. And the 1,000s is minus 1, not 9, as in the previous slide. OK, 
Can you do the below subtraction problems mentally? Again, it's you subtract the bigger number. So 300 from 500 is 200. 43 from 36 is minus 7. 7 from 200 is 193. You can do that mentally. And you can see this one. So you, you don't try to work from the right to the left. You go from the left to the right. 5,000 from 7,000 is 2,000. 400 from 800 is 400. 89 from 92 is 3. 2,400 plus 3 is 2,403. And that's how you get 2,403. And there it is. Now, dividing by magic 9. Remember I mentioned magic 9 is a magic number. So if you got this big number, divide by 9, this would be your answer. How you get it is you drop the first number, then add from the left. So 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1 is dropped. Then you add 1 to 2. That's 3. 3 to 1 is 4. 4 to 0 is 4. 4 to 1 is 5. 5 to 1 is the remainder, 6. And that's your answer. 1, 3, 4, 5, 4, 4, 5, point six. Remainder, add. <coughs> you could, on this number here, if we had any nines in there you could add the digits left after you take the nines from the original number that will be your remainder we didn't have any nines so remainder we knew ahead of time would be six divide by magic 11. again you drop one and you subtract from the right so two four six seven divided by 11. two is dropped two from four is two two from six is four 4 from 7, remainder of 3. Any number divided by 11 always has a remainder. Now you get into the magic 5s. Divide by magic 5. So by 5, the number is, you, you multiply the number by 2 and divide by 10. If you're, if you're doing, if you're dividing by 25, you multiply the number twice by 2 and then divide by 100. If you're dividing by 125, then you do three multiplications of 2 times a number, divide by 1,000. The examples would be 49 divided by 5 is 49 times 2. Um, Divided by 10 is 99.8. 103 divided by 25 would be 103 times 2, which would be 206 times 2, which would be 412. Divided by 100 is 4.12. So when you divide 64 by 5, it's 12.8. So you multiply 64 times 2, it's 128 divided by 10. The same with 25 and 125. Wow. 146 is divided by 125. That's multiple of 2 twice. So it's 1,168 divided by 1,000. So this number, the answer is 1.168. The number of, digit, of digits in the original number, 3. Hence, the number of decimal places, 1, 2, 3. I have three numbers here. I have three decimal places. This is the multiplication tables of 11 to 99. We're going we're gonna to multiply by 17. <clears throat> 2 times 17 is 4 carry the 1. I'm sorry. 2 7s two, two are 14. 2 1s are 2. Carry the 1 is 3. 3 times 17 is um, 21. 3 1s are 3. Carry the 2 is 51. 
4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 1 is 4. Carry the 2 is 68. 7 times 17 is 49. Carry the 4. 7 times 1 is 7. With the carry of 4 is 11, 9. And 9 times 17 is 7 nines or 63. Carry the 6. 9 ones are 9. Plus 6 is 15. 1, 5, 3. So you can do this. This accelerates all the way up to 99. Uh, 20, you want to multiply 27, 34, 66, whatever it is. You get the multiplication tables for it. <clears throat> when you multiply by 2, 4, or 8, don't think calculus. Think doubting. Doubling, sorry. Um, 73 times 2. 70, 703 doubled. 140 plus 6 is 146. Two three four two times two, as you, as you double two thousand, the four thousand you double three hundred to six hundred, you double forty, to eighty, and you double two to four. Four six eight four is your answer. Much easier than multiplying this out. Multiply numbers that differ by two or four square middle digit. And minus n is your answer. n equals 2 or 4. Differ by 2. So 24 and 26 differ by 2. I'm going to take the square of 25 minus 1. It's 625 minus 1. 624 is the answer. Differs by 4. 35 to 39 differs by 4. 37 is squared minus 4. 1369 minus 4. The answer is 1365. You can do this mentally, obviously, with practice. Fast multiplication by 4. I'm sure everybody knows this, but just to cover it, uh, you can double the number twice. And if, if you, on decimals, you just move the decimal point to the right one place, for, and 100 is two places. When you multiply two digits, two times four is eight, drop it, and a space. One times three is three, ends up like this. Then you do two times three is six. One times four is four, which you cross multiplying, and that is 10. So the answer, you put 10 right in there, but carry the one. So the answer is 903. Seventy six times ninety eight. Um, seven times nine is sixty three. Six times eight is forty eight. Drop both right there. Then add sums of below multiplications. Six times nine, fifty four. Seven times eight, fifty six. Fifty four plus fifty six equals one hundred and ten. Add zero for a thousand base. Seventy four forty eight is your answer. <clears throat> multiply by the magic five five times this number you just add a zero which is a multiple of ten and divide by two it's that easy as long as you know it it's that easy by 25 and 125 and 625 98 times 25 add two zeros and divide by four so add two zeros to 98, divide by 4. This is your answer, 2450. And likewise, with a bigger number, uh, 428,764 multiplied by 125, you add three zeros and divide by 8, which is your answer right there. All right. Here's a Vedic trick. Uh, when the sum of the unit digits is 10, the unit digit is the one on the right, 
right here, three and seven are the unit digits, and the other digits are the same. All you need to do is um, multiply the unit digits and drop it. Add one to the one of the remaining two digits to be multiplied, 11 times 12, 132, and drop. So your answer to this multiplication table set up like this, it must be like this with the with the unit digit is a is a sum of 10 and the other digits are the same then it comes out to be done this easily when the sum of the last two digits is 100 and the remaining digit is identical as it is here the last two digits 97 and 03 would be 100 You take 3 times 197 is 291, then add a 0. It's got to be 4 digits. And increase the, the multiplier by 1 in the hundreds place, which would be here. So 1 times 2 is 2, and drop. So 103 times 197 is 20,000, 20,291. Again, 5 and anything connected with it is a magic number. You multiply anything by 51. 42 times 51. You divide 42 by 2 equals 21 drop, then drop 42. 21, 42 is your answer. You see how easy that is, right? As long as you know it. Um, 124 by 51, 2 times 124 is 62, drop, and then 124, only the tens. So you have to, you have to uh, carry the one. All right. So it's 62, carry the one from 24, it's 63, 24. The multiplication by magic nine. You could multiply this number. Add a zero, subtract the original number. So add a zero to this number right here, and then subtract the, uh, the original number, and you get the answer. 46 times 99. The first 46 minus one equals 45 drop. Second all from nine, Last from 10. Four from, four from 9 is 5, drop. 6 from 10 is 4, drop. 4, 5, 5, 4. On this bigger, bigger number, 276, you minus 1 is 275, drop. Then 2 from, two from 9, 7 from, is 7. 7. And then 7 from 9 is 2. And then 6 from 10 is 4. Again, this is done mentally. All you got to do is practice. Next is this big number multiplied by 9 million nines. Here is the answer. How you get that, you take the original number minus 1. And then you drop that. Then you take the original the the, the 9 million number and subtract the one the one that you dropped. And then you get this as an answer and you drop it. And then you combine the two. When you drop, you don't add or subtract anything. You just drop it in place. So this number times this is this. You can do this mentally with practice. All right, this one, now it's going to get a little bit easier. You multiply two digits by 11. What you're really looking for is what's the number in the middle. Split digits, then add both digits from the middle digit. 11 times 52 is 572. Drop 5 and 2 with a space in the middle. Add both digits together to make a middle digit. 572. Takes you two seconds to do. Any number you can, you can multiply by 11. 53 would be uh, 58, 583. 
54 would be 594. 56 would be 6. Huh. Hang on. You got me. <laughs> 6. Uh, I got a mental block. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, six, five and six are 11. So it's six, one, six is the answer. 62 is uh, eight, six, eight, two. 63 is six, nine, two. You get one second, you could do it this way, the previous. Just add the six to the two, and that is your middle digit. Or add the tens digit to the number, then drop the unit digit. So if it's 62, you just add them together, and it's six, eight, two. Six, eight, and then two. Multiply by magic 11. Uh, drop the unit digit, then add each left number to the right number, then drop first number. All right, drop the unit digit of three. That's the unit digit right there. So you add two to three, it was five. And that's, that you drop there. Four to two is six. One to four is five. And you drop one. So the answer is one, five, six, five, three. Multiplication by magic 11. You drop the 9. Drop 9. Then 9 plus 6 is 15. 5, carry the 1. 6 plus 7 is 13. Carry the 1 is 14. Carry the 1. 7 plus 2 is 9. With the 1 carried is 10. Carry the 1. So you drop 2 with the carry, add the carried 1 is 3. 3045 9 is the answer. Again, multiply by magic 11. Drop unit digit, then add each to one to the on the right and drop the first digit. So 9 here is the unit digit. And 3 plus 9 is 12. Carry the one, there's the two, carry the one. Five plus three is eight. Add the carry is nine. Two plus five is seven, and drop the two. It's that easy. If you've got a big number to multiply and they're all zeros, eliminate the zeros, do the multiply the number, then add 12 zeros back on. You want to multiply three digits by 111. You drop the unit digit four. Add unit in tens places, four and three are seven. Add all three places together, four, three is seven, plus two is nine. Add, add tens in the hundred places, that's three and two is five. Hundred places, digit drop is two. So the answer is two, five, nine, seven, four. Two, five, nine, seven, four. In this one, it's the same thing. Um, you drop the unit digit of two, and then you add unit and tens, which would be two and five. I'm sorry, two and three are five. Three and four are seven, and two are nine. The tens in a hundred places are three. Three and four are seven. And you drop the four. 47952 is your answer. This is a lot to take in in just an hour. So, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of the potential, and then hopefully you guys would want to jump on it yourselves. All right. Um, when you multiply 111 by two, by a two digit number, add both digits, then put sum twice between both digits. 23 times 111. Two and three are five, so the answer is two, five, five, three. This is kind of slick, I think. 111 times 34, 
3 and 4 is 7, so the answer is 3774. Now down here, you need three, you have, instead of 111, you got 1,111. Um, so you got to add three digits in the middle. 1,111 times 42, that's 4 and 2 are 6, 46662 six, six, is the answer. And likewise for 84, uh, that's, that's a carryover, so 4 and 8 are 12, there's the 2. Carry the 1, 4 and 8 are 12, there's 13. Carry the 1, 4 and 8 are 12. Carry the 1 is 13. And then carry the 1 is 9. So this can, this can go all the way up. Multiply by 12. You drop 5, each number, then multiply twice to, times 2. Then you add to the next. So you drop two, I'm sorry, you drop five right there, and then two times, two times five is 10 plus six is six, is six carry the one, is 16. Two times six equals 12 plus nine is 21 carry the two. Two nines are 18 plus two is 20 carry the two. Two times two is four. So your answer would be 68,304. Uh, this can be extended. You see that you multiply by 2 when you're doing it by 12. If you're multiplying by 13, you would multiply by 3, 14 by 4, and so forth. Multiply by 13 is, as I mentioned, um, you drop 5, each number multiply times 3, then add to the next. You drop 5, and then 5 times 3 is 15, plus 6 is 21, carry 2. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 9 is 27, carry 2. And uh, 3... 3 times 9 is 18, plus 2. I'm sorry, 3 times 9 is 27, carry 2. So your answer would be 7,397. You can multiply by 15. Again, anything with 5 is a magic number. Um, 12 times 15, 12 divided by 6, divided by 2 equals 6. 12 plus 6 equals 18 times 10 is 180 is your answer. 110 times 15. You divide 110 by 2 is 55. 110 plus 55 is 165 times 10. 1650 is your answer. You can multiply any two digits by 125. The number is divided by 8. So 97 divided by 8 times 1,000 is 1,200 and 125 times 1,000 is 12,125. You can do the same thing with 125, but add, add the number, you can do it by 8. If by 25, you would you would divide by I'm sorry. You would you would uh, multiply by four, and if by five, you multiply by two. So it's, with 125 three digits, it's eight. 25 is four. Five is two. The squares a bunch of three squares. This number squared is easy. You have five threes, you got five ones, a zero. Then you have five twos, and then you square the last digit of four. So you can see if somebody asks you for the square of this number, it's easy to do with the ones. You got uh, six threes, so it's six ones, zero, six twos, and then square the two. 
48 squared is easy to do. Uh, 48 minus 25 is 23, drop. 48 minus 50 is 2. 2 times 2 is oh, 4, drop. 48 squared is 2,304. So, square is ending in magic 5. 75 squared is 7 times 8 equals 56, drop, then 5 squared. Any Anytime you square a number that ends in 5, your answer, the last two digits in your answer will be 25. Um, and all you do here, all the way down, 35 squared is 3 times 4, 12, drop, and then 25. 65 is 6 times 7. You can see the pattern. You take the oddball digit, 6, the tens, and multiply it times its superior, 7. Multiply 3 times 4, its superior, 7 times 8. And all you, that's all you need to do, even in larger context. 115 squared is 11 times 12, 132 drop, and then 25 drop. 13,225. Um, any number, as I mentioned, any number that's squared that ends in 5 always has 25 in the last two digits of, its, of the answer. Square numbers into 50. You add unit digits to the 20, to 25, then square the unit digit. 53, you would add 3 to 25, making it 28, and then the square of 3 is 09. The square of 56 is 31, uh, 36. It's done the same way. Add 6 to 25, and drop it, and then square the unit digit. 31, 36. Squaring two digit numbers. Square each digit and drop. Three threes are nine, three, four fours are 16. So nine, 16, drop. Then three times four times two, then add in hundreds. So it's not, you see here the sequence of how it's added in the hundreds. So you can do, you get the square of 34 in your head very quickly. The answer is 1156. 78, the same way. You square each digit, 7 7s are 49, 8 8s are 64, and drop it. 7 times 8 times 2 is 56, 112, then add in the hundreds. Add those together, that's your answer. Square two digit numbers, 64. Square each digit and drop. 36 and 16, drop. Multiply digits. 4 times 6 is 24, then double it, 48. Add to the middle digits in the number. So we just dropped the square of 64, and then we add the sum of um, the multiple of 48 to the middle digits. 4096 is your answer. It's your remembering skills that will increase with practice. Square 32. Three threes are nine, two twos are four, three times two times two is six times 12 is the middle digit. 12 is two, carry the one. So there's a two here, there's a two here, and, a, and carry the one making nine and 10. 10, 24 is your answer. Squaring three digit numbers. The answer of all numbers 316 and below have five digit answers. Those, ab those, ab those above have six digit answers. If you square 512, square each number equals 525. Square of one is 01. Square of two is 04. Drop. One times five is one and double it is 10. 1 times 2 is 4. I'm saying 1 times 2 is 2, and double it is 04. 
two times five, then double is 20. So you have 1004 added to the middle and then 20 added to the middle. Add those up and that is your answer of how to square 512 mentally. It takes a bit of practice, but it can easily be done. Square three digit numbers, 403. Square each number first and last and double and add. So four fours is 16. Four threes are nine. Four squaring zero is zero. Squaring three is 09. And then add two zeros for the middle. And then four times four times three is twelve that you double. Is 24 you add to the middle? 162, 409 is your answer. Square each number. 8 squared is 64. 25 squared is 625. Only two digits, so you got to carry the 6. For the middle two digits, 8 times 25, then double. 400. So we have, it comes out like this. 680, 625 is your answer. But you can see here, it's fairly easy to do once you practice. Square any number from 100 to 200, 122. Then add 22 and times 100. So 22 to 122 is 144 times 100 is 14,400. 22 squared equals 44, then add both. So you add 44 to 14,400. Your answer is 14,884. Likewise with 114. You add 14, which is the odd number away from 100. So 128 times, times 100 is 1,280, 1,800. Then 14 squared is 196. Then you add both 196 to 12,800. 12,996 is the answer. Squaring some repeat numbers. One and two. Uh, this is <coughs> fairly easy if you've not seen it. But you want to square 33. The two numbers to watch are the first and are the first and the, the the first and the third number. If you square 333, the first number increases by one, the third number increases by one. If you square by 3,333, then you have three ones and three eights, and 33,000 squared four ones and four eights. Likewise on 99, the same principle. Any any number with repeating digits can be done this way. So you can get the square of um, 9,999 by just doing th nine, by three nines and eight and three zeros and a one. It's that easy. The duplex method of squaring, your head's going to hurt if you get into this stuff down here at the bottom. Um, the duplex method of squaring is 11 squared is 121. 111 is 123, 21. And so forth. You can see four digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. Three digits, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. You're reversing you won't go all the way up. Five digits, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. That can go on in, ad infinitum. How you would do it for groupings, this gets very complicated. That's for another day. All right, in cubing, only four types of numbers can be cubed. The first starts with one, example 19. Second is uh, ends in one, 31. The third is same number in example, 44. The fourth, the numbers are different. 12 cubed, first type, starts with one. It's two spaces after the number. 12 space space. 
two drop, then two cube dropped. So two, squ two squared dropped. So two squared is four, two cubed is eight. Then double the two middle digit numbers, then add to the square and cubed number above. The two middle digits are 24, double them. So it's to this number, you add 48, and that is your answer. That's fairly easy to do. 21 cubed, reverse the game. Has two spaces before cubed and squared. Double the two middle digits, and then the same thing to 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 the above. Um, one squared is one. Two cubed is eight. And then you you double the middle numbers of 42 and your answer is 9261 22 cubed only cube one digit and then write it four times so if you're trying to cube four eights you take four eights just like that or i'm sorry 22 cubed you you're cubing that you cube one digit and you got four eights and then the two middle digits you double Add them together, that is your answer. <coughs> the 23 cubed is the fourth type. You cube the first and last number. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. Then the first number squared and multiply by the second number and do the same in reverse. So two squared is four multiplied by three is 12. Three squared is nine multiplied by two is 18. Double the middle digits and add. So 12 and 18 go to 24, 36. Add those, your answer is 12,167. 12 cubed equals 12, then 2 squared equals 4, then 2 cubed equals 8. Drop all. 12, 48, double the two middle digits. 24 to 48, your answer is 1728. The square roots the are very easy <laughs> once you know this. The closest regular square root number is 81, for the square root of 81. 87 minus 81 is 6. Then you double 9, which is the square, uh, the square root of 81, to 18. Um, and then 6 over 18 translates to the decimal of 9 or 3 or 0.33. So the answer is 9.33, uh, actually it's 9.327, but um, this is a, a almost a very succinct approximation. Square roots. The closest regular square number is 121, with a square root of 11. You take 138 minus 121 equals 17, then double 11 equals 11, I'm sorry, 11 is 22 doubled. 17 over 22 equals 11.772. The cube root of a big number. The only thing you need to do here is actually memorize the scale here. Um, and that's this, essentially the cube of numbers 1 through 9 that all end in the same number you're cubing. 1 is ends in 1, 4 cubed ends in 4, 5 cubed ends in 5, 6 cubed ends in 6, 7 does not, 8 does not, but 9 does. There's four numbers that don't. Otherwise, any number you're going to cube, the last number in the answer is the same number, except for 2, 3, 7, 8. Um, so if you're going to, if so, if you're going to cube, 
this number. The last number is 1. So 1 cubed is 1. Drop and cross out 791. Then 29 is between 3 and 4, but closer to 3. It's between 29 is between these two numbers, but it's closer to 3. <coughs> And your answer is 31. <coughs> Pardon me. Your answer is 31. The cube root of a really big number. You drop the last number of the of the five of the five cube equals five. So that five will be in the answer cross up the last three 857 is closest to 9c so your answer is 95 is the square root is the cube root of this number the palomore as we all i think should know is uh, an example is madame you can spell it either way, backwards and frontwards. The palindrome math, when you when you want to uh, multiply these two digits, you go vertically first. Six times eight is forty-eight, leaving eight carry four, and then you then you multiply six times three is eighteen. Five eights are forty. So that's 50. If you add them together, it's 58. Plus the 4 carry <coughs> is 62. Leaving 2 carry 6. Then step 3 is the left vertical. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 6 carry is 21. Your answer is 21, 28. You can do this, and when this is live, I get some young person, and um, I show the next one, which is a bit more scary of multiplying these two digits, but it's the same principle. You first multiply 6 times 3. Or, I'm sorry, 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. And then 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 6 is 12. That's 27, add the carry, 28, carry the 2. And then you've got to do the, the all 3 here. 4 times 6 is 12. I'm sorry, 4 times 6 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 5 is 10. Adding those together, and then you do the last 2, which gets you, the, uh, gets you very close. And then the last one is 3 times 4 which is 12 and you add the three. So you can do this with practice. This is the one I mentioned earlier at the start about um, on a job interview. When the guy says, what else should I know about you? You could say I can multiply three or four digit numbers mentally faster than you can use a calculator. Guess who's going to be talked about at the interviewer's lunch? And right, how do you know if the answer is correct on large number of calculations, you could redo the you could redo the function and come up with a different answer. Which one is correct? It's called casting out nines. If the sum of a of the digits of a number is a multiple of nine, it is therefore divisible by nine. <coughs> if you add each of these digits equals twenty seven. Two plus seven is 9. Multiply any number by 9 and the sum of the answer's digits always always results in 9. 1, two, one, two 3 times 9 oh, 1107 7, 8, 9. <clears throat> you can check that in this one 459,873 times 9 equals this 4,138,859 equals 36, 3 plus 6 is 9. <clears throat>
So casting out nines, you can check your answer in multiplication. <coughs> Pardon me. Casting out nines in addition. If you're going to add up this number, you go across equals 30, and you and you leave it here. This one equals 35. 3 and 5 are 8. 37 is 10. Throw away the 0. 2 and 2 is 4. Add this number up is 20 equals 2. Add these up, it's 9. Here's the answer you got. Adds up to 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. 18, 24, 31, 34, 36, 3 and 6 are 9. There you have it. Now, with that said, in subtractions, it's not 9. <laughs> Same principle. Um, add up these digits, 4, 2, 5, 8, 7. Add up to 8, 3, 5, 7, 6, 9. Add up to 3. Here's the answer when you subtract it. 6, 8, 1, 8 adds up to 5. 8, 1 is 9. And 8 is 17. And 6 is 20. Three, <clears throat> six and eight are 14, 15, 25. <clears throat> and, and then three and eight, subtract three and eight is five. I'm sorry, on the, on the thing here, you got to subtract the number. Casting out nines and multiplication, again, are not nines. Multiply this number by this number, and this is your answer. Add this up, it's 6. Add this number up, it's 7. Add this number up, it's 8. 6 7s are 42. Then add. 4 and 2 are 6. Equals 6. That is verified. In division, not 9s. Divide this large number by 1, 2, 3. Equals 7, 1, 2, 6. Remainder, 4, 5. Pardon me. This number adds equals 6. This number equals 6. This number equals 16. Lose the 1 equals 6. The remainder of 4 plus 5 equals 9 or 0. Casting out 9s in squaring and cubing. 42 squared is 1764. 4 plus 2 squared is 36, then 3 plus 6 equals 9 or 0. 1764 equals 18, then 1 plus 8 is 9 or 0. Verified correct. And cubing. 13 cubed is 2197. 1 plus 3 <coughs> cubed is uh, 64. Then add equal and add them together and it equals 10. Throw away the zero is one. The sum is 2197. So that's 19. Add together is, is uh, I'm sorry, equals 10. Add together eight and nine and one is 10. Equals one. Verified correct. This is just how long for your money to double and triple in case you, I didn't know this until I somebody showed me. Figure out your salary. Um, I'm retired, so huh, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Uh, if your annual salary, salary is this, drop the zeros, divide by two. That's your hourly rate. Again, the reason you might want to get into this um, is it can give you a decided advantage in a promotion interview or a job interview or trying to get into a university. Here's how you might do that. <coughs> this is this is the website. These are the on the web, just fast verdict mental math tricks. And it walks you through the whole thing. These are on your phones, iPhone or the other ones too that you can do when you're sitting in a doctor's office or something waiting. Here's the door prize. 
in case some of you are uh, sons or grandsons or daughters of immigrants, Radio Garden, if you put that on your iPhone or the web, brings up a, uh, uh, a Google Earth globe. And you'll see dots all over the place. You can rotate the globe and go to any country in the world, click on the dot, and you get the radio broadcast live streamed on your iPhone and your car radio, if it's got Bluetooth, um, or on the web. You get news uh, programs, talk shows, music <coughs> from China to Sweden to Ireland, uh, Turkey, anywhere in the world. That, that was the door prize. <laughs> Here's a parting shot in case I just came across this. Uh, it's called a Colette's Conjecture. You pick any number. Um, if it ends in an even number, you divide by two. If it, if it ends in an odd number, you multiply by three and add one. You do this about three, four times, and the last four numbers in the sequence will be eight, four, two, one. Once at one, you start a loop where it's a odd number. So you add three, make it four, then five. Um, and you just, you just continue on like this. The reason it intrigued me, I read where some mathematician had found a partial solution to this. And I laughed. I, I couldn't even think, what the hell was the problem? <laughs> you had to be there. It was funny. All right. I'm done talking, I think. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Mike. Anything uh, anyone would like to uh, ask, feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs> or type in the chat. I think you've stunned them all, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's when it, when I where I worked. That was a QWERTY forehead. Your hit your head hit the keyboard. So you yes. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm not a math person, so that's what mine was doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I had a good I had a good time. I hope they enjoyed it. All right, Mark. Thank you. All right. Anybody? Any last uh, question comments? All right. Well, yep. you can review this. You'll be able to review this on the library's YouTube channel once it's uh, posted in the next uh, day or so. So do look for it there. And thank you for all the thank yous coming in now. Great. Glad that uh, you've joined us tonight. And Michael, thanks for sharing um, the information about Vedic math. Uh, you bet, Mark. Thank you. All right. Great to have you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye right. now. Good night.